What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. So today we are building a $700 PC inside the Cooler Master Master Box Q300L with a Ryzen 5 1600 processor. Let's get right into it. So the first thing I'm going to put into the motherboard is my Oloy 16 gigs of RAM, which is two memory sticks. And the first thing I'm going to do is just open the latches and then I'm going to line this stick up to match the notch in the middle and I'm gonna push down. Now, this is my first time building a PC, so I was a little cautious. I did not wanna push down too hard, so it was a little bit challenging, but I got it in, it clicked, and I pushed in on the latches a little bit and it was all good. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the next one. So now that both memory sticks are installed and secured, I will open my Ryzen 5 1600 processor. So there's the chip and let me take it out of the plastic casing. So do not grip your chip from the bottom, just grab it from the sides. And if you can see there's a gold triangle, you have to line it up with the very faint triangle that is on the actual processor socket. Before you install it though, lift up the lever, that way the socket opens. Slide your processor right in, do not apply any force. You will bend the pins and kill your processor. Now that it is slid in, push down a lever and your processor is now secure. With your processor now installed, we can now put the cooler on top of it. So uh, Ryzen processors usually come with a stock cooler, which for most low end builds should be enough to cool your processor. You can see that little notch on the top that will come in handy later on. Thermal paste is pre-applied, do not touch it, it will be a mess. Now there are these two brackets on the side to mount a cooler, but I will have to remove them. The brackets are now removed and we can now install the cooler. As mentioned before, the little notch would come in handy. Face it towards the I.O. where you'll find some USB ports, an HDMI port, and an Ethernet cord port. Now, line it up with the screw holes that held in the brackets and also line it up in the center of your processor so the thermal paste can be applied. When screwing in the screws, do corner by corner to apply even pressure. With our CPU cooler now installed, let's plug it in. So there's pretty much always a CPU cooler fan header right nearby. So let's plug it in. Uh, I was doing it wrong. There is a little slit that you're supposed to put in, which is on the back side or whichever side it's on for you. Uh, so make sure you're plugging it in right. That way it goes in. You don't bend any pins or break something. With the CPU fan now plugged in, I will plug in my Kingston 120 gig NVMe drive, which is where I will install my windows. Now, above the PCIe slots and below the cooler should be a small little screw. Across from that screw should be a little slot. You're gonna unscrew that screw, take it out, put it somewhere safe, and do not lose it, you will need it. Now, the NVMe, you will take it Make sure it is the right way, which should be the sticker faced up. You're gonna slide it in right to that little port. Make sure it's in all the way. Push the NVMe down, take the small screw and screw it back in. I'm finishing up the NVMe drive and once we're done with that, the motherboard is done. Now to prepare the installation of our motherboard into the case, you need to screw in all the standoffs, which are labeled based on the size of your motherboard, which in this case, we're using a micro ATX motherboard. So now time to install the IO shield. Uh, in order to install it, you gotta push it into the little slot where it belongs. And um, as simple as it is just to push it in, uh, I did find it a little tough, but uh, I got it eventually. And if you find it challenging, you'll get it eventually too. 
All right, now to install the actual motherboard. So you wanna make sure it lines up with the IO shield and uh, take your screws that should come with the case and screw them into the screw holes once you line up the holes on the motherboard with the standoffs. So now it's time to install our SATA drive. So there's a little tray in the back of the case, which is held on by a thumb screw. And you're gonna want to put the SATA drive on the side that has the HDD written on it, just so it lines up properly and it will stay in once you screw it in. So it's basically, like I said, just line it up and use the screws to screw it in. With the SATA drive on the tray, we can now put the tray back in the case with the thumb screw. Very easy, just screw it in. Now it's time to wire out the SATA drive, so it's really simple. The SATA cable is slightly like an L, so basically you just want to line it up on the SATA drive and also on the SATA ports on the motherboard in order to connect it. Last minute purchase, I had to get a, a fan hub because uh, this motherboard only had one uh, fan header. So I had to get a fan hub in order to connect the front fan. So uh, let's install the front fans. To install the fan, first you wanna find out how the air flows through it. If it does not have these arrows that indicate where the, the air will flow through, Spin it around, put your hand on the back of it, just to, or on the front of it, just to see which way the air flows. Now, I will be um, putting in the cable side of the fan towards the back so I can plug it into the fan headers. So what you wanna do is first line it up with your screw holes. Give it a quick twist with your finger just to get it installed a little bit. Then do the cross pattern again, get it down on the opposite corner. And then you wanna take your screwdriver and screw those two screws in a little bit, just to keep the fan slightly stable. Take your other screws and now put them into the other holes should be easy enough now that the fan is stable. Screw those in a bit. Now you wanna start screwing them in the cross pattern all the way in. So slowly take it each corner. Make sure you get opposite sides. So if you're on the top left corner, go down to the bottom right. If you're on the top right, go down the bottom of the left, and vice versa. Okay, now you have your fan installed. So. What you wanna do is rewire or wire this cable through one of these slots at the top or wherever your fan is. So that way you can connect it to whatever it is you need to connect it to. Now that you have connected your fan, uh, since my fan hub is in the back, I rewired my fan wire to the back so I can connect it to the fan hub. Um, it should be the same way as I mentioned earlier with the CPU fan. Just slide it in with the notch, correct. Now I'm gonna install the second fan and I will show you guys the next part. With the two fans now wired and installed, let's move on to GPU and if you're not using ethernet, Wi-Fi cards. So they should be going into any of these three slots. You'd rather have your GPU go in the first PCIe slot. So the first thing you wanna do is on the left of your case, there should be a bracket, this bracket right here. You need to remove that bracket and I have pre-punched these two PCIe slots 
uh, you can punch all four if you want just if you want to or if you're using more than one graphics card or if your Wi-Fi card is a larger type now I need to uh, punch out this one and I prematurely punched out this one but I punched out this one for my GPU so let's remove the bracket first there should be a screw here on the left on the case right here and you're just gonna unscrew that. With our bracket now removed and our PCIe slots now open, to install the GPU first, you wanna make sure this latch is down. Now, again, here's our GPU. And you wanna make sure these ports go into the PCIe slot on here. So just slide them in, slide them through, make sure this metal bracket will align and the pins will align from the GPU. All you gotta do is push it in. The latch will close and your GPU is ready to be connected. Now, to fully secure it, you must re replace the bracket. And as easy as you took it off, you must put it back on. Forgot to mention that with the same type of screw that you mounted the bracket with, you will need another one in order to finally mount the GPU. Now your GPU is fully installed with the Wi-Fi card, the graphics card, and two new fans. Now installed with some wires plugged in. This build is nearly done. We just need our power supply. So in order to install this power supply, uh, the case comes with a bracket for the power supply. So what you're going to do is basically line it up with the screw holes in the power supply and screw it in. With the bracket now on the power supply with this particular case, you want to put the power supply fan towards the bottom. So basically the fan blows air down instead of up into your parts. So what you're going to do is use the original four screws that were holding the bracket without the power supply and now use them again to mount the bracket now with the power supply. Now we're going to connect the power cable, which I don't know why I'm really narrating this. It's straightforward. Just push it in and also turn the switch above it to on and yeah, your PC is ready to go.